Father. It is said that the mystic thread used to weave the garb of the Vestals comes from this cave. But it is more than that to me. This is where your mother and I were once sheltered by the Sage of Yoyana. It is the place where we were blessed with a strong, beautiful daughter. And the place where I made my resolve to take back this nation and rule it by my own ideals. Even seeing the faces of the multitudes who had rallied to our cause, our hearts still wavered. Dare we pitch our outnumbered forces against a great religious order with the power of the crystals at their command? Dare we did. We resolved to overthrow the orthodoxy, capture the earth crystal, and seize the throne. But how would we rule this new nation we would forge? How would we lead the world? After three days and three nights of heated debate, on the morning of the fourth day, I mustered my army. So this is where it all happened. I see you have found the Grand Marshal's sword and shield. And yet you have equipped neither. Tell me, Idia, is this how you would answer me? That's right. This is my answer. Explain yourself. As long as a nation exists, it will have enemies, whether or not it seeks them out. A ruler must have the power to fell those who would threaten the people's survival. This is why I sought the Grand Marshal's sword. And every nation has people within its borders, a citizenry that it must protect. To keep its subjects from harm, a ruler must carry a strong, sturdy shield. So, I sought out the Grand Marshal's shield. But when I took these two great relics, sword and shield, into hand, I suddenly felt afraid. You wielded a mighty sword and a stout shield, yet grew fearful. Intriguing. I thought back to what I had seen in my travels across the realm, and to what I had read in the histories. Stories of men who claimed power to slay their foes, but who forgot the ones they loved, and whose hearts grew cold. Men who gained the power to protect people, but then lost sight of themselves, and grew vain, proud, and complacent. They put too much faith in the power they had achieved. It became all-consuming. It was all they cared about. That was what I was afraid of. Justice must be supported by might and authority. But when it is delivered at the point of a sword, it is not but coercion. You are right to fear power. Yes, even power sought in pursuit of justice is not immune from corruption. A stout shield is needed to protect the people in times of war. Yet the true goal should be a world with no need for shields. The noble course is to believe in the ideal. Find that stout shield, yes, but do not bear it. The little bird who left our nest has returned on the strength of her own wings. Along the way you were lost, injured and betrayed. You knew despair and cried in anguish. We were confused. We doubted everything. We closed our eyes and ears to the world around us. But you overcame the pain. You raised your head and did not shirk from the truth. You took your troubles in stride. I met new comrades and knew the warmth of friendship. I was emboldened. I listened. I learned just how much I still had to learn. I felt the love of my master, my friends, my family, and my father, who I always looked up to and strove to follow. Hmm. Your journey is over, my daughter. But you have one more trial to face, together with the friends who stand beside you. I am Brave Lee, Grand Marshal of Eternia. This is your final trial. I shall spare no effort, offer no mercy. Begin!
say your prayers! Your trial has only begun! so easily. Strong, my daughter. How strange. For the first time in my life, I feel no regret or frustration in defeat. Perhaps... <sighs> this is what I had hoped for all along. Father... It is nothing. For being told I might never wield a sword again, this body served me surprisingly well. Now, you must take this. This is the stave of the Grand Marshal of Eternia. 
He, nay she who bears it, holds full authority to rule the duchy. Rule Eternia? Me? Yes. You have shown that you possess the strength to cut down your foes, the strength to protect your people, and most of all, the wisdom to know that though you possess both, you need not use either. Go forth and rule in wisdom, Grand Marshal Idia Lee. The future of Eternia, nay, of the world itself, is in your hands. Yes, Father. Why, Idia? Mother? What's going on? <laughs> Your father and I have decided to move out here to the woods. Seriously? But isn't this the wise one's place? <laughs> it certainly is. Or was. And from what we've heard, he hasn't been around here in quite some time. I've been thinking of renaming the place. Brave Lee's Needleworks. And say Juliana is okay with this? <laughs> Don't worry, dear. The old sage could never get angry at me. But listen, Idia. I'd like you to have a word with your father. Hmm? About what? Oh, his armor. Even though we're retired and living here in the woods, he refuses to take it off. <laughs> I have grown accustomed to the proper ballast it provides. If I took it off, the next stiff breeze might carry me clear into the sky. I think I'll stay as I am for now. The full metal seamster, huh? <laughs> That's gotta be a first. Sir, the delivery you asked for. Alternus, I've been waiting for you. Fabric and thread just as you asked. If you exhaust your supply, simply say the word and I shall procure more. Thank you, Alternus. You're always so helpful. And what of the other items I requested? I have brought them, sir, but are these truly what you were looking for? Patchwork for apprentices. 100 embroidery patterns for spring and summer. Yes, these are perfect. You're really serious about this needlework stuff, huh? Of course. Have you ever known your father not to be serious? For my first project, I believe I shall make you a quilted vest. Then again, Noble Tsuna hinted that he wanted a new tea cozy, and I promised to knit Alternus a woolen scarf. Before that, the armor. Served. Finally! I'm so hungry I could eat a horse! Mmm, it's so tender. This is divine! It's like a little symphony playing in my mouth with every bite. You simply must tell me, Tiz, what is this masterpiece? Uh, meat? Hey, come on, Tiz! Magnolia is asking a serious question. Uh, sorry. How about roasted wild boar with blueberry sauce? The boar shoulder Carl gave us has really aged well. What's the sweet and sour flavor? That's blueberry jam. We had some in the stores, so I used it as a rub for the roast. Oh, right, the stuff I bought but never used. And what's this on the side? This warm risotto-like stuff. Rice, mostly. Tiz, you're doing it again. Oh, sorry. How about, uh, 
buttered rice porridge with mushrooms and wild vegetables. I picked a bunch of wild mushrooms and roots when we stopped for lunch the other day. I figured they'd go well with the buttered rice left over from yesterday. Buttered rice? From yesterday? That's right. I used the leftovers from Magnolia's dinner. Tell me, Tiz, do you have a philosophy de la cuisine? Huh? A philo what? A policy. Towards cooking, I mean. Do you have a particular approach? For example, you put lots of effort into presentation. I, I do? But everything is loaded with garlic, and he sticks to simple dressings like ketchup and brown sauce. <laughs> She's calling you a one-note cook. What? Come on, Magnolia. Pull some punches, would you? Idia, meanwhile, likes the extremes. Sweet things are super sweet. Spicy dishes get a quadruple dose of pepper. Yep, that's me. Food with a punch. She's not afraid to explore an experiment, which often results in total disasters. That sounds familiar. Remember her charcoal on the half shell? Uh, and the legendary soup of many colors? <laughs> Look, you have to try new things if you want to improve as a cook. You are trying to improve? But I have to say, there's a certain... Je ne sais quoi about Tiz's food. It's tasty without being flashy, and it has real depth. It makes me wonder, just what is his philosophy? Where did he learn to cook? Hmm... I'm pretty sure I don't have a philosophy, and no one ever taught me, per se. I mean, I'm not a gourmet like Idia and you. I don't know about fancy ingredients and dishes. There must be something. Come on, don't be coy. Well, one thing I do believe in is not wasting food. Does that count? Like today, I used the boar meat we got and that extra blueberry jam for the roast. Then I had the idea to use up the leftovers from last night's dinner. We just happened to have the mushrooms and wild plants on hand to dress it up. Magnifique! Tiz, I think you have a wonderful approach to cuisine. It's nothing special. I just hate to see good food go to waste. Now that I think about it, you've never made a bad meal. Your dinners are always just right. Well, I'm not as adventurous as you. I stick with what I know, so I don't mess up all the time. Well, excuse me for trying to spice things up from time to time. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that reminds me. I made a totally unadventurous dessert, too. Sweet roasted chestnuts. What? Why didn't you say so earlier? Bring it out already! You really are the best, sir.